Good morning, it is March 12 and I am on the Cambo Trail, which is in Saguaro National Park. I'm on the west side and I'm gonna be doing a bunch of little trails today. So I'll tell you them as I go along. This first one is, um, it starts out at an equestrian area and there's picnic tables and stuff. So I had to drive a ways from my camp. I'm staying at a private campground. It's called Snowbird's Nest. It was very random how I found it, but I have the best spot in the whole camp. I'm isolated from all the other people. The only thing is I have to walk quite a ways to get to the washrooms and those washrooms are oh, very unique, I must say. I've never seen wooden showers before, but I guess in Arizona you can get away with it. And of course there's no water, it's very primitive at my camp, so I have to walk, but uh, the, this spot is so special. And in the evenings there's so many birds and the sunsets are spectacular. So I'm just very pleased. And it's close to this national park. So that was a good find. I think we'll be serenaded with a lot of birds today. They are just so active. I'm doing this hike on a Sunday and there's only three other cars in the parking lot. So I was happy to see that. <laughs> I drove around the park yesterday and, and it was packed. So obviously this isn't a well, a very popular trail, I guess, I don't know, but I'm loving it. Can you see the Ocotillo have leafed out? That usually happens after a rain. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty special. The day after Moses dealt with the golden calf incident, he said to the people, you have committed a great sin. So now I will go up to the Lord and see if I can make atonement for your sin. So Moses again ascends the mountain of Sinai. This man is a serious mountain climber. And he says to God, these people have committed a great sin and have made for themselves a god of gold. So please forgive their sin, and if not, then block me out of the book which you have written. So great was Moses' love for his erring brethren that if he could not prevent their destruction, then he did not want to see it. He was willing to surrender his own life if that would serve to atone for their sin. He was willing to bear their guilt here and in the hereafter in order to secure their forgiveness. The Apostle Paul manifested similar unselfishness towards the Jews of his day. I'm walking right by a highway so that doesn't help the ambience, but it's still pretty. Love the wildflowers. Moses performed many noble acts, but this was the noblest of them all. It is not easy to estimate the measure of love in such men as Moses and Paul, for our limited powers of reason do not comprehend it any better than a little child is able to comprehend the courage of heroes. Moses is a type of the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep, who was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of his people.
When Moses asked to be blotted out of the book, this means the book of life, in which are recorded the names of all those who have professed to be children of God. Then the Lord said to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. Look at that gorgeousness up there. Okay, I've come to a junction. I'm now on the Ironwood Forest Trail heading toward the Picture Rocks Wash Trail. This is absolutely the best time of year to do this hike, I can tell you that. Those who fall away from God, who because of their unwillingness to forsake sin, become hardened against the Holy Spirit, will have their names blotted out of the book of life and be destroyed. In general, the Bible teaches that everyone must bear their own punishment. This is a saguaro skeleton. Poor thing. There is only one substitutionary atonement that the Word of God accepts, and that atonement is Jesus Christ, who, being without sin, could be punished for the sins of others. a little climb here. <laughs> First climb of the day. In interceding as he did for Israel, Moses typified the intercession of Christ for sinners. But he could not, as our Lord, bear the guilt of the transgressors. Don't know if you can see Tucson in the distance, but it's there. I knew there was that possibility. Saguaro National Park has the highest concentration of saguaros in the Sonoran Desert. And because they only grow in the Sonoran Desert, we can make it even sound more impressive that they have the highest concentration of saguaros in the entire world. And apparently they have the biggest ones as well. Although I haven't seen any real giants, except maybe this one coming up, but yeah, pretty impressive. Right, now I'm going on the Picture Rocks Wash Trail. That's a mouthful. Aha, uh -huh. some more obstacles. Where's the cables when you need them? 
this is like a nice little cool cave, literally. Then God said to Moses, go, lead the people to the place that I have spoken to you. My angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day that I visit punishment, I will visit punishment upon them for their sin. Oh my, this guy just totally gave up the ghost. You can get lost in these trails. I met three ladies that were kind of lost. And so I hope I'm not lost. <laughs> oh, there's not good signage. Wherever I'm at, it's beautiful anyway. Okay, obviously I don't go that way anymore. Oh good, trail this way. Climbing. Well, I'm delighted to see this sign, but discouraged to know that I'm on the Brittle Bush Trail. When I want to be on the Picture Rocks Wash Trail, so I'm gonna have to backtrack a mile. Ah, oh, maddening. Okay, I'm back at the previous sign. Picture Rocks Wash Trail. I guess it just goes this way. See, I went that way. But, this doesn't really look like a trail. Well, whatever, I'll try this. It's a pretty rough trail if it is a trail. <laughs> but I guess I'll keep on. I just wasted an hour of my time. <laughs> Two extra miles. Oh me, oh my. Oh well, good thing I brought lots of water. And good thing I'm enjoying myself. I'm telling you, this isn't a well-traveled trail. I just see animal tracks, but no human footprints. But this has got to be it. There's no other way, because I've been down every other way possible for the picture rock trail. So that's kind of cool. I'm not on a very popular trail. I'm relishing that anyways. <laughs> it's fun. Fun exploring. Look at this adorable little swarrow on this cliff. Like, how does that work? It's not going to be able to grow up to be a big boy. That's amazing. I am pretty sure I am not on the right trail, but it is beautiful. Look at, what are these flowers? What a brilliant, beautiful, they look like a monkey flower. Neat. And now I get to scale that. Oh my, major roadblock. Mind you, I've been having a roadblock the whole trip here. All I know is that I'm getting majorly scratched up because these things are prickly and then I have to get through them. Oh boy. <laughs> Nuts. Well, I'm not exactly sure where I'm at, but I'm grateful for GPS because I kind of know the way home <laughs> and I'm in a wash, so that's good. Now, the Lord plagued the people because of what they did with the calf that Aaron made. After the slaying of the 3,000, a plague had broken out in camp. He's just sunbathing. <laughs> Even this was an evidence of divine mercy to emphasize the danger of yielding to sin. Though God was willing to forgive his people, if pardon was obtained too easily, they would be emboldened to committing transgression again. They must be made sensible to the evil effects of iniquity. 
in all God's dealings with us today, we should study to understand his divine purpose and to learn the lessons he designs for us to learn. It is thus that he would develop and strengthen our character. And my character has certainly strengthened on this hike. <laughs> it did not go at all as planned. But somehow I'm making it. Anyway, makes one wonder why our current plague came into existence, eh? Oh, hallelujah, I am on an official trail now. Pretty sure it's the one I started out on. So, yeah, this was not good, but God worked it out. So I literally am not a novice hiker and I know how to read signs and maps and things, but that sign was very misleading. That was not the direction of the picture rock trail. And so, do you think I should tell them that they need to do better with their signs or just leave it and let the next person wander? What would be your vote? I don't know, I don't wanna be made a fool, but I went up every possible trail. I went up one way and it said trail closed. So I would be curious, I should start this trail the opposite direction, but I'm not into that. No, no, no. Anyway, the Healing Hiker rating for this day is a one out of five. This is the worst rating I have ever given any trail, but they deserve it. The only redeeming part was the first little bit, mile or two, it was pretty and I liked it. But yeah, I do not recommend this loop at all. See, this is the trail I should have been coming down. Prophecy Wash Trail was my last leg. But yeah, something's weird. Anyways. Oh, I see my car. Oh, they say all's well that ends well, right? So yes. So I want to show you what I did today. I started at Cambo parking lot. Did the Cambo Trail, this was all well and good. Made it to the Ironwood Forest Trail and that was nice. Got to this intersection here and I made a wrong turn and I went on the Brittle Bush Trail instead for about a mile. And then had to turn back. Got back to this intersection. I went up um, a trail a little ways but it said trail closed. So I turned back and I must have gone down this wash here or something like that. And then I finally made it back to the Cambo Trail and back there. But they really need to give better arrows signs here. I think I might talk to them. Anyway, my phone said I did 10 miles and it was brutal. <laughs> I didn't film it all, but trust me. I had to use GPS. I was so grateful for my phone and to get a bit of connection. I'm almost tempted to go this direction, <laughs> the reverse, but not really. And see if there's better navigation through here where I end up because I really am serious. I think this trail is closed. Anyway, if one of you guys want to do this, let me know how it goes. Ha.